Ang kwitso. Ang yung mga kapag mato kay 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 yung mga kapag mato ông nhầm ra sầm rách tự do chi ai cả sa phó tang nữ sĩ phơ đại miên nhầm nong trường tha sĩ đại sơn hà nâng phiệp hay khai nơi khăn ông bảy cam bảy chi ra bọn này chấm niên p t c e bảy sáu mươi đời ai cả sa ní cầm nót lấy ai cả sa e bảy sáu mươi mến sơn pon ra mùi rơi chặt tập bầm bầm Ông nhầm ra, xâm rạch tựa dấu ai cơ xa, phí tùm bố, chí ai cơ xa phó tăng, tam xâm nào xâm rồi bỏ xa, mình tự vì kai bí kê đây khi xâm phón. Đại miên lệ, yêu ấn, xôn mũi, xam bấy, xôn bấm bấy, xe bấm bấm bấm, nâng xôn mũi, xam bấy, xôn bấm bấy, xe bấm bấy. Hãy ai cơ xa này cầm nọt lệ, ý, Bây xa là mùi mơn xôn phuân và mùi rối chất thật và mùi. Chúng này ai thầm nào mùi tiết ông nhầm ra nâng chanh đầy dùm rách nâng nông lòng bình xong trộp chạp chạp khám mộng đi. Hiệp và to tên ní ông nhầm ra có bói mần trầy rõ tạp bào tạp lạc cá anh chơi anh nạy chùm niên vì Thì y bảo bài thầm mùi cho một căn cái này bảo đọc xe cam thông bảo tục xăm là cả. Sốt đấy lúc đấy nè ai chấm nến Ta lúc đấy chấm mua ấy My full name is Peggy Levine Chúng ta bây giờ bảo chúng ta chấm mua Peggy Levine Lúc đấy Bà ở cùng này Ta lúc đấy cao nâng ai khai chấm nằm ná I was born on the 21st of January, 1952. I have two, nas two nationalities, uh, Australian and United States. Bà, ở con hay cho sắp thằng ngày nữa ta Tì lầm nợ chân trai bà lộ sấy, lộ sấy nợ tì cả lại ná Nên address is 
in Victoria, Australia. My current occupation has a number of roles. I'm a registered clinical psychologist and clinical supervisor in Australia and New Zealand. I'm also an anthropologist with a specialization in medical anthropology. I'm an associate professor at Monash University and University of Melbourne, where I supervise primarily PhD students. I'm also a permanent research affiliate with the Shoah Foundation at the Center for Advanced Genocide Studies in Los Angeles. I have no religion, however, I honor my Jewish ancestors. ដែលលោកស្រីបានដឹងគឺលោកស្រីមិនមានចំណងញាតិលោហិតដល់ញាតិពុនជាមួយនឹង បាទអរគុណហើយលោកស្រីលវាញដោយអនុលោមតាមវិធានសាមសិបមួយ Good morning, expert. Can you please stand up and repeat after me? I solemnly swear that I will assist the trial chamber honestly, confidentially, and to the best of my ability. I solemnly swear that I will assist the trial chamber honestly, confidentially, and to the best of my ability. Yes. បាទអរគុណលោកស្រីអ្នកជំនាញហើយអង្គជំរះនឹងវិធីការគឺមានអ្នកជំនាញទៅក្នុងតំណែងការហើយហាវអាបាជឡើរអូហ្សាយអិនសូសីអូឡូជីដែលអាយរីស៊ីវ្ហ្វ្រ៊ុ
I first came to Cambodia in late 1995 and then again in early 1996. I was invited by Ms. Kema Yong, who at the time was the chair of psychology at the Royal University of Phnom Penh. That was my first time inside តែលោកស្រីធ្លាប់រស់នៅនឹងធ្វើការងារនៅប្រទេសកម្ពុជានឹងដែរឬទេហើយធ្វើការងារអ្វីហើយរាវចំណាយពេលវេលានៅរស់
I had a lunch with him and his wife from the university, and they were quite affectionate with each other and quite kind to each other. And in that lunch, I asked them how they met, and they told me that they met um, during the Khmer Rouge period and that they were married in that time. And I'm the one that used the word forced. I said, oh, you were married in the forced weddings. And the, the couple said, no, our weddings weren't forced. And that really confounded me because up until that moment, everything I had read about the weddings had led me to believe that they were forced. Um, so then, moving a little bit forward, I had met people at Thak Mao, because again I was a clinician and I started doing some consultation at Cham Nis Hospital in Thak Mao, um, a center that Dr. Bumi um, runs, if I can say that. Um, and I met other colleagues there who just casually told me about their weddings and their stories were very much like the couple that I met at the university. So then I think my first entrance into my formal study was me sort of calling myself on the table. I wanted to understand how I came to believe that the weddings were forced. So I went into the literature and I did a very, um, a very thorough investigation into the literature of any time that word was used. I went into historical documents, um, socio-political commentaries, biographies, sensationalist journal journalism, and even some documentary films. And what I found was the word was often being used, and when there was sampling involved, the sampling was often biased. So then I thought, oh, this is a very good topic, <laughs> and I want to know more about it, um, and I want to do a bit of immersion on this topic, and I want to understand the structure and the function and the meaning of the weddings across time and place. As, as if I were a cartographer, I wanted to map what happened with this phenomenon that we call weddings under DK. Um, so that was, that was the first bit of research I did into those documents, and then I decided to study the tradition of weddings in Cambodia. And I did that by going into many, many old documents. I spent quite, my, my speaking of French is not very good at all, but my reading is still pretty good. So I, I went to the French Cultural Center and spent many hours there going over many, many documents, um, looking at cartographers' work, um, looking at Delaporte's work from um, 1893, when he was creating an atlas, um, and those who were coming to Cambodia for many different re reasons were documenting their observations of traditional wedding practices. Um, so I, again, immersed myself in that. I started to attend traditional weddings in, in Cambodia so I could get an understanding of weddings. I spent a lot of time trying to map the weddings before 1970, before the Law Nol regime, because I was aware by talking to, again, colleagues at the beginning before I started my formal research, I was aware that 1970 was a very profound time of change in this country. And during those times of profound change, people were being moved out of some rural regions and going into the city to study, and rituals were changing a bit um, in 1970. So I, I stayed with looking at documents before 1970. And then that led me to my, my study, where I decided to go back and do a second doctorate on this topic so that I could get ethics clearance, uh, so that I could really think through duty of care, confidentiality. I did not want to be associated with an NGO or any government organization. I independently funded my research. Um, I wanted to have the capacity to have the time so I could immerse myself in this study and I got a scholarship to do a PhD. I started that PhD at University of Victoria in New Zealand. Um, admittedly, things happened in the department. My two supervisors left their positions. And at that time, David Chandler was returning to Australia from the United States, and he was a 
professor at Monash University, moving into retirement, but I approached him about my topic and asked him if he would consider taking me on halfway through my doctoral work as a student um, so that he could be my supervisor and he agreed to that. And so I transferred my PhD to Monash University, which meant that my work needed to go through ethics clearance again um, to make sure that it was reliable and that it was a valid, culturally reliable study. บ่าวคุณให้ได้ลูกศรีจําเมื่อท่านสนาใดได้ที่Uh, the title of my PhD study is A Contextual Study into the Weddings and Births under the Khmer Rouge, colon, the Ritual Revolution. Um, admittedly, as a result of immersing myself in the research in weddings and traveling with people to locations where they were wed, I discovered many things about the births and decided to then include that, extend my PhD time so that I could study the births as well during that period. The book that I did that came out of that PhD um, is titled Love and Dread in Cambodia, Weddings, Births, and Ritual Harm under the Khmer Rouge. I deliberately chose a university press that had a, an independent international review process of my work before it could be considered for publication. ແລະລູກໄຊບັນຊາອໄມມັນນີ້ຍັງປີການຮຽບປຽບປຽນໃນກໍານົດໃນກໍານົດຂອງຄໍາຍກະຮອມຕາລູກໄຊມີຕຸ
a sample that I used for my formal study into the mapping of weddings under decay. With regard to the bibliography, I, I honestly have to say, but I can get the court this information after the break, I have not counted the documents that are in my doctoral thesis. Um, I'm sure there's hundreds, but I can calculate that for you. I would like to let the president know that I have traveled to Cambodia with all of my hard data with me. That which is in the back of my thesis of the 192 people that were part of my formal Sample. I have a synopsis in the back of my thesis. I did want my research to be as transparent as possible. But if there is a question that I am asked that is not in this document here today, and if I'm a little bit uh, sketchy about my response, I can crunch those numbers for the court <laughs> um, with my hard data that I brought. My hard data, I've also brought my videotapes and my audio tapes with me. And I hope I've answered your full question. <laughs> ថ្ងៃត្រង់ហើយឲ្យមានប្រកាសសម្រាក់ចាប់ពីពេលនេះទៅទៅ <coughs> Sạm Na Cá, nơi không đủ giúp Sạm Na Cá thì vĩnh nơi được xưa nữa bạn muốn mong một lần là sạm rãi cho.